claim this peak in the name of Australia. Oh, hi there. So, another challenge for respiration is high altitude. So here at the top of Mount Everest, one of the big challenges is a lack of oxygen. For about every 5,500 meters of increased altitude, there's about a 50% drop in the partial pressure of oxygen. So the air is very thin, it's hard for me to breathe. But, but keep in mind, the air that's here is still 21% oxygen. It's just that there's less of it. So the proportions are the same, but just the overall uh, value is different. So you can even hear the wind going by there. So we need to talk a little bit about altitude and what kind of physiological responses animals have to those kind of conditions. Whew, it's a little chilly. I think jeans was a bad idea for mounting the Himalayas. I'll see you at the bottom. Okay, so, so here I am at my Himalayan base camp. Bitterly cold outside. Very low oxygen. It's very, very difficult to breathe. But I'm safest in here. I'm well above 8,000 meters. Most, most human permanent habitats are not found any higher than about 4,500 meters because you can't really have agriculture above those heights. But even up here, there are many different kinds of creatures that are able to call this home. So I'm a little bit afraid to go outside of my tent because here are some of the creatures that might be out there. Mountain goats, like we see in the Rockies, are found at elevations up to about 4,000 meters. In the Himalayas, yaks range from about 3,000 to 5,000 meters. The mammal that's found at the highest elevation, though, is this critter, the pika. They are found at elevations higher than 6,000 meters. But believe it or not, the terrestrial animal that reaches the highest altitudes is not one of these mammals. It's this, the Himalayan jumping spider. Man, spiders are everywhere. These little guys live at elevations up to about 6,700 meters. It's thought that they make their living on aerial plankton, little insects and things that are brought up to height by air currents. 6,700 meters is impressive, but of course there's animals that go even higher. Birds. The bar-headed goose regularly migrates over the tallest peaks of the Himalayas, flying at altitudes of 9,400 meters. But the bird that claims the record for the highest flight ever accurately recorded is this beautiful creature, Ruppel's griffin vulture. One of these griffin vultures was measured as flying at a height just under 11,300 meters. At that height, you and I would be unconscious and soon to be dead. The air is so thin up there that helicopters can't fly and kerosene won't burn. Yet some birds are able to fly that high with little difficulty. We'll see how they do that in future classes. By the way, how do we know the Ruppel's griffin vulture flew that high? Well, that was how high the airplane was when the bird was sucked into its engine. Okay, I've got to do it. I've got to make a push or I'm going to die up here. I'm going to venture outside my tent. Wish me luck. Oh, it's bright. Good thing I've got my sunglasses on for snow blindness. The air's thin, but I think there's enough oxygen here. I think I'll be okay. I think I might just make it through this after all. <laughs> 